What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanders channel, my name is Shanks. In 2D, we are playing a 2v2 match on the beautiful map Duradan Forest in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. As usually, we pick random and as usually, we get to play with the Isengard army. And to be honest, I was expecting something like this because I'm kind of cursed and it's my destiny to play Isengard army until the end of my life. And for that reason, I actually prepared like a speech, like an intro if you want to say so. And hopefully, you guys will enjoy. The sons of Saruman in Lourdes, my brothers. I see in your eyes the same fear they would take the heart of me. The day may come in which the courage of Uruks fails. In which we are forsaking Saruman and break all bonds with the orphan, but it is not this day. The hour of Gondonites in Rohirrim when the age of Uruks comes crashing down, but it is not this day. This day we fight. By all that you hold dear in this good meets back on the menu, boys, I beat you stand. Uruks of the West. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, you know, I was kind of even prepared because I know uh, from eight, you know, eight out of ten games, I will be picking random. I will get to play Isengard, and uh, to be honest, I'm kind of getting better and better with the Isengard army, and I think that's the only great part of the story because I get to play it so many times. Maybe I'm an evil person. Maybe I'm cursed. I don't know. But hopefully, you guys will enjoy. I know you're gonna. You potentially want to watch some different factions, but uh, I pick random most of the time and let the destiny decide for me. And my destiny is to hang out with Uruks and Crossbowmen all the time. On the bright side, we are on a map to run forests with like plenty of settlements. I think in total there are like 16 settlements on this map, which is more than enough for us to get uh, Ellen Musk rich. And hopefully we will be shining bright like a diamond. And also hitting like a truck. But first, oh, okay. I mean, that's not a good. <laughs> I didn't see this coming. And also, by the way, when I play 2v2 as an Isengard, I always like to open with double furnace. Just so, you know, for the worst case scenario, if I lose all the settlements outside, I have still the furnaces inside the castle to make some money over time. Okay. So, first of all, we need to recruit more and more Uruks. Because without them, we will eventually lose every single lumber meal we have on the field. And because there is a chance that we will get focus from two people at the same time. I mean, that's also something I got used to. Uh, you know, throughout the entire weeks and months, I've been playing now more and more multiplayer games. But it's good. The thing is, if they cannot defeat me, I will come always ahead. Because I will be the one who is fighting against two people. Which means I will be always able to get ahead in the power points department. And get more and more power points collected. Which means I will get the you know power spike of the industry, tainted land, freezing rain, and all that good stuff. And later on even Balrog. Okay, I think um, it's not too bad. I mean, it could be a better start, obviously. But as you could see, I mean, also the Rohan player is sending peasants to us. Which is okay for my ally, I think he has now a better time. Even though the map control doesn't look for him good either. Rohan is just so powerful in a map like this, because the more you expand, the more you have the chance to expand even more. You buy a farm and you recruit a peasant immediately, and the peasants, they are not the strongest units in the game, but they can be very spammy faction, spammy unit, and you can get so many of them at the same time for a very affordable price. You know, 120 each, which is pretty good. And it's very unique to the Rohan faction because that's the only faction that can use a resource building also as a production building at the same time. No other faction can do that. Okay, and at the beginning of the game it's about surviving. It's about getting to the point in which we can finally recruit some pikemen because we are against two, two good factions, Gondor and Rohan. And for that reason, we need lots of pikemen. But later on, hopefully, it's gonna be good. And when I play Isengard, I like to play aggressively. I don't want to give too much time to my opponent. And I want to siege his base ASAP. So when you have to make a choice between sieging Gondor or Rohan, I would always recommend to choose Rohan to siege, because Gondor's defense is so much greater than the defense from Rohan. And also, keep in mind that Rohan has like less spots in the castle, which makes the siege even a bit more effective if you are playing the evil faction who wants to siege. Okay, I mean, the problem is those peasants, besides being annoying, they are also a great counter to the Uruk pikemen and we need either the help from my ally with his Gondonites or I will eventually have to recruit some berserkers early on. 
it's not looking too good right now. And the problem is, even though it's a massive map, and uh, the thing is that the bigger the map is, the better it is for the evil faction. But keep in mind that on this map, you have plenty of creeps, goblin layers, like a lot of them. And that also means that the, you know, the good faction players will have the chance to collect lots of power points. And when, you have, when they have three power points collected, Rohan can summon the elves and Gondor can summon the rangers, which can also be good to counter my pikemen and to go for a potential you know base rush remember we have four factions in this <laughs> in this in this map and i'm the only one who's playing evil it means my base is like all you can eat open you know open all the time you can go inside the jeans whenever you want to and for that reason we need to play a bit more defensively especially early mid game and this rohan is getting on my nerves and i can tell you one thing guys he will pay for this. He will pay for this. He won't get away with that. You will be paying for this. The annoying peasant spam. I will see it you first, my friend. I will see it you first. Okay, we need a bit more power points for the industry, which is very good for the for the power spike because yes, Isengard's economy later on is unmatched, but early on you will struggle quite a lot to get to the power spike in which you can finally make something happen. Okay, almost two power points collected, almost. This peasants though, I mean, they are getting on my nerves. And I can totally agree with Saruman that he didn't like those peasants either. They are so annoying to play against, especially early game, you know? Because there are so many of them, so many of them. We need a bit more map control, we need to keep spamming pikemen. And the good thing about the evil factions, especially about Isengard is, the more units you lose, the more power points you will gain. It means spamming units is actually a very efficient way because even if you lose, you will still win something if this makes sense for you guys. Okay, the outpost is under attack. He was able to destroy my tower. Who now has the strength <laughs> to face against the forces of Isengard and Isengard mean player Shanks? Nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Okay. More and more Lamy Mills required. Macro is extremely important when you play evil factions. Like, when you play good factions with the Gondanites and Rohirrim, Micro is essential to keep your Rohirrim and Gondanites alive. But if you play evil factions, keeping units alive is obviously very important, but it's not as important as for the good factions. But what is more important is the Macro. Since you need to expand and your base is gonna be open, you need to pay attention to everything. And the one downside of having a lot of map control is that you give lots of opportunity and also options to your opponent to attack wherever they want to. Which also means you need, again, more attention to protect everything you build up to not feed power points. But I like that, you know? I want to be party speeding in a fight actively. When I play free for all, I'm also forcing fights. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's gonna come. And the problem is he might actually have the range allies now. Hopefully not, but he might. Oh yeah. Okay, I need help from my ally now. Oof, I need to make sure to not lose to Uruk, but please. It's the most important building in my castle and I have to protect it. I have to. Screw the settlement, my friend. Send me help. Send me some Gondonites to defend myself. The Uruk pit, if I lose it, it's over. I cannot recover from this. Please. But it's tanky. It's level 3 building and it's also shooting. Please. Please. The elves, I mean, the ranges are annoying though, because I have no armor on my pikemen, and also pikemen generally are very weak against archers. Oh boy, <laughs> that's not good. But I think we should be able to, I'm gonna also repair this actually. Let's send up some workers to this location, and then we can repair it over time. We have also lords on the way, the fighting Urukai himself. And we should be, hopefully, in a good spot. I mean, the rangers, they are annoying, but they're gonna be gone very soon. Luckily, they are not permanently on the field. Only temporarily. So we should be kind of good. And you know what we need to do? We need to work around the cooldown windows. We know now that his ranger summon is on cooldown. That means that's the time for us to shine. That's the time for us to get even more map control. Because in a in an ideal world, what you want to achieve is you want to force your opponent to use those summons defensively. You don't want to you don't want them to use that offensively when it comes to rush your beast. And when you play Isengard, you need to hold the line 
hold the gates, hold the game a little bit longer than every other faction, and you need to be patient to get your furnaces inside your castle to level 3. That's gonna increase the durability and the tankiness of your base incredibly much, and every single building inside your castle has the chance later on to shoot at enemy units. When we get to this point, we don't need to be that careful anymore, but until then, you need to play extremely nice defensively. Always keep a couple of pikemen inside the castle, don't underestimate the rush power of your opponent. Never. You see, we need to be always on point, that's what I'm talking about, the macro is very important to demolish the buildings in time, this way you can deny him the power points and experience points to keep the enemy units level low and enemy power points low as well. Okay, I mean, the one thing you need to be extremely careful about is sentry towers. These buildings are giving lots of power points to your opponent. That's the, these are the buildings you need to always demolish in time to deny him the power points, power points he's looking for. Because once he has the eagle summon available, he can summon them. Eagles are dealing incredible amount of damage to everything they touch. They will one-shot pikemen, they will two-shot heroes, and they will three-shot your base. So, denying him the power points is very important. Oh, <laughs> the second I'm saying that, my Uruk's, my Uruk leader, Lourdes, is running it down. I don't even know where he died. <laughs> I didn't pay attention, dude. My bad, guys, my bad. Okay, I mean, it's okay, <laughs> I guess. What can I say? I will take it. I will have to take it. I have no other choice. Um. Okay, I mean, the good thing is we have four power points in the bank. We can also go for the, for the uh, field of fires to get even more rich, but I think um, Freezing Rain is a better call here. Because Rohan might have a lot of leadership later on with Theodin, Aragorn, and then eventually Gandalf from Gondor can all, you know, remember, they can all stack up together to get an insane amount of boost of strength in terms of damage and armor. And Freezing Rain is saying, no, 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 my good sir, you will have no leadership bonuses for three minutes, which is a long time in RTS games. There is a level 3 soldier with heavy armor and forge plate, but Saruman can deal with that. My wizard. The real white wizard. Go for it. Blast them away from this world. Take this in your face, son. There we go. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, we have almost 5 power points collected, but we need now the armory. And remember what I was saying. I like to play aggressively. I don't want to get this game to late game, in which the Gondor Rohan team will have additional summons, they will have incredible mobility with Rohirrim Archer and Gondorite combination, which means they will definitely be able to win the map control fights in long terms. We cannot keep up with the mobility. In the Rohirrim Archer, they cannot on only counter our, our pikemen, but also counter our uh, allies' Gondorites. It means our ally can't do anything about them in long terms. And we don't want to reach this point. We don't want to give the opening the chance and the time to reach this point. We need to siege him as soon as we potentially can. That's the one way of victory, guys. The one way to victory. Okay, we have five power points in the bank. I mean, uh, the problem is they are not rushing us anymore, but look at the minimap, guys, you know? <laughs> the minimap is the, what, is the one thing you need to pay attention to. Take this, fireball! Fireball, do it, do it, Okay, we can get all the upgrades now. Our money is gonna look even much, much better in a bit. And then what I can do is I can siege from this location. I think that's the best call. And hopefully my allies can assist me. Because we need to get some ramps on the field. Break the wall and go inside the jeans. And hopefully this is gonna be the one push to get us the victory. Oh, there comes another rush. But we have preparations. We have actually lots of pikemen inside the castle. We shouldn't be able to achieve too much, I think. I hope. We have also Saruman around this location. We can steal them if they don't pay attention, but he's stealing, you know, he's paying attention. I cannot control them. Mind control, you know what I'm saying? Fight for me and I will reward you. But I can do this. A new power is rising and victory is at hand. And boys, holy guacamole, I cannot wait for the next update of the patch 2.22. There are going to be massive changes, so please make sure to check a couple of, you know, every couple of these. Your beefy launcher, because the second the update is live, 
you will get a notification, your update button in the launcher will blink and click on it and you will be always up to date with the most recent version of the patch 2.22. And if you have any suggestions, feedbacks, you can also do that in the in our Discord. You can find the link for that in the description down below as well. Okay, we're freezing rain. We have lots of pikemen on the field. Let's split them out a little bit and send them everywhere to every single location to get the map control we deserve and we need and we will get. And you see, the time is in our favor because as we are talking, every furnace is slowly but surely turning into a into a tank, like a um, super tank uh, building that can shoot, which makes it to a nightmare situation for the opponent team to rush. And now we once again know that the Rangers have is on cooldown. And once again, keep in mind what I said it uh, you know earlier. I said we need to play around the cooldowns. We need to punish. We need to understand the game's mechanics. We need to know, okay, he used the heal, he doesn't have heal for the next 4 minutes. He used the rangers, he doesn't have the rangers for the next 3-4 minutes. That's the time for us to shine. That's the time we need to do something. Because good factions in long terms are annoying for the evil factions, since they will have the chance to get additional summons. They have walls protecting their castle. And there is also a Gandalf. That's the one thing, you know. You, you know, you see that, like keeping map control in long terms against Gondor and Rohan combination is not as easy as you might think. We also need to pay attention to the pikemen to not give too many power points to Gandalf. I mean experience points because him getting more levels means more DPS and more damage output from his abilities. And Gandalf is the one solution to every problem as he can easily kill everything that we have. He can one shot almost our heroes with the easter light, he can lightning sword them, he can go for a juicy zap plus, it deals hella damage and we need to avoid that whenever we can. Okay I think now we need to recapture the outpost we just lost and start sieging as we have now some sort of protection with the combos with the pikemen and with also the two heroes lord is gonna be able to keep Gandalf away from us uh, without lord it's very you know lord is the best hero hands down boys like the <laughs> amount of stuff he's offering to you is actually kind of crazy if you think about it also my ally is a Gandalf but only Gandalf the plap also also known as Gandalf the gray so by far not as powerful as Gandalf the white but I think he should be okay. I mean, this. Um, the good thing is our combos are hard countering this Rohirrim archers. Take this. In the red the level of animation, I'm in, I'm still in love with that. And also in the next update, every single affection will have a special glow animation when they level up their units and also heroes. As you know, we are also not we are not only trying to make a, a balanced patch, which means it's going to be hopefully enjoyable for everybody who's playing it. But also we want to make it visually attractive by adding lots of quality of life, life changes and hopefully you know we can also make the buildings and the units look more in hd textures very very soon but again we personally have no experience in modeling and also creating new textures so if you guys have any experience and if you want to join the team and support us by creating awesome models textures for the units and buildings you can also contact me in discord we are always looking to recruit new team members but again, you know, that's not a paid job. We are doing it for the laugh. We are doing it for the, for the BFME, the game we love and care about. And if you have free time, you can, you know, you are willing to afford and put time into. It would be always amazing. Okay, we, he's coming for my base, but I can kind of defend myself. We need to now create pressure on the Rohan base. We need more and more pikemen. More and more pikemen. We might lose the Urupit now, but as you can see, Every building is shooting, and whenever you can, you want to automatically target Gandalf. Because the Gondor Knights are just too tanky with shields and heavy armor and Gandalf leadership. So it's better for us to, you know, focus down Gandalf and force him to retreat. But unfortunately, we lost the Uruk pit. I think it's okay, because now it's our turn to do some stuff. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we can fireball this, I think. Oh, but we are taking so much damage, dude! Saruman, run! Run, run, run. Okay, okay. We should be fine. We should be fine. We should be fine. No panic, guys. No panicking. No panicking. We got everything under control. We need to rebuild the Uruk pit. And now we need to start sieging. Now, you see, they are becoming stronger every minute passing through. It means we need to make something happen now. We cannot... If this fails, this game can be easily turned around. My ally has lots of Gondonites upon the field. And the second we break through the wall, I can just watch on his horses. And then he can just go inside. 
and focus down the oh my okay there is another gandalf i don't even know what's going on this is the one thing you know with the massive maps look at the mini map we have a great amount of map control and i want to keep it but again that draws so much attention and uh, requires so much focus to do that that i'm losing a couple of times my focus and i just don't i just don't know what's going on right now you know <laughs> all right we are command points kept unfortunately we cannot even recruit a second ballista anymore that's the problem we got i want to cripple this dude actually hopefully he's not paying attention i want to cripple him so badly guys okay oh that's a oh nice wizard blast from my ally inside the jeans but my ally is popping off or what I'm not used to this. <laughs> nice one. Nice one, dude. And map control wise, it's not very good for my ally. I think he's like, what, four farms also, but it's okay. It's okay. I mean, we have the rest <laughs> pretty much. And again, always focus on map control. Because the thing is, as we are sieging him, they need to pay now all the attention goes to the castle of them. They need to play around the castle. They cannot give it up. It means we have the time as we are sieging to do some other stuff. And the other stuff is always map control. This is a win-win situation in which we get more money, but also the enemy team gets less money. And now we can just go inside. I can use Freezing Rain. All the leadership bonuses are gone. The statue doesn't mean anything. Faramir, Gandalf, theory and leadership doesn't mean anything. And my Saruman can maybe do it. Steal them and make them fight for you. Fight for... Oh, he got knocked down on the ground. What happened? Did you guys see what happened to my Saruman for a single second? Fight for me and I will reward you. Yes, let's kill this Gandalf if he can. The problem is the steel is in the way. Uh, look, our units, they need to move permanently before they can get a chance to shoot. Let's go for a juice with Zapla, shall we? Oh, but the eagles from the opening is incoming. They kill my lords in a second. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Eagles are just so powerful. We need to revive them immediately. Okay, one of the eagles is gone. Hopefully, he will not be able to see my Saruman. My Saruman is being shot by something in the face. But I have now the heal. The will of Saruman. Boom. No one can contest the will of Saruman. Nice. -o. And that, that's what I'm talking about. From playing this many Isengard games in a row and getting 9, almost 10 out of 10 games I pick random to play Isengard, I got professional with this faction, dude. And he's gonna call it, boys, and GG well played. GG well played. Rohan has been completely defeated. Gondor is the last remaining opponent and we are coming for him. But I, I, told, I told you guys. I told him... As he was sending many many peasants to us he will pay for this and we made him pay for this we have so much money take a look into the minimap that's how you control a map and that's when you control the map you control the game the bottom is there <laughs> the last man standing of gondor now we can just siege the gondor player oh that's not needed did you play guys i hope you enjoyed this one if you did please don't forget to subscribe and also leave a like I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.